Welcome biologists. Today we're going to be looking at respiratory quotients, which is taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology over the topic of respiration. So today we're going to be looking at energy values for different respiratory substrates and also how to calculate the RQ or respiratory quotient. So, so far we've been looking at glucose being the respiratory substrate used in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. However, there are other respiratory substrates that are available to be used in respiration, such as lipids and proteins. So, um, each one of these, glucose, lipids and proteins, will give off a different volume of energy. Uh, and lipids give off the highest volume of energy. This is because they have the highest number of hydrogen ion, uh, ions that are, are made by the breaking down of the lipids. So lipids have the highest number of hydrogens within their structure, which when broken down, releases these hydrogen ions that flow through the ATP synthase. Next, we have proteins, and then we have carbohydrates last. Now, carbohydrates are the preferred respiratory substrate, and we'll get on to why later on. How they are used within uh, respiration are as follows. So we should know that a glycogen or starch can be broken down into glucose, glucose into pyruvate in glycolysis, and then the other stages which we are familiar with. However, lipids start off and are involved in a different way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lipids can be broken down into glycerol, and glycerol can then be changed into pyruvate, and pyruvate can then enter into the link reaction. Or lipids can be broken down into fatty acids, which are then can then be converted into acetyl coenzyme A, which can then enter into the Krebs cycle. Amino acids can be broken down and deaminated into pyruvate, which again can enter into the link reaction, or they can be broken down into acetyl coenzyme A, which again can enter into the Krebs cycle. So the respiratory quotient. The respiratory quotient is uh, something you can calculate, which measures and is a ratio of the volume of oxygen consumed uh, versus the carbon dioxide given off by respiration. And it is using this following formula. Um, now, this respiratory quotient will be different from for a carbohydrate, a lipid, and a protein. And we're going to look at those values in a second, which you do need to know off by heart. But below is an example. So, for example, if I had six lux of carbon dioxide um, released from the broken breaking down of glucose and six lux of oxygen consumed in this process, it's six divided by six, which equals one. And that is our respiratory quotient for carbohydrates, one. You do need to know these off by heart. Now, as you can see, these are slightly different from the volume of energy produced. And this is because um, lipids and proteins, our RQ value is lower because they require more oxygen to oxidize them in comparison to carbohydrates. Now, in an exam question, you may be asked to calculate the RQ value and asked to decipher, therefore, which respiratory substrate has been used by that particular organism. You may be also asked to think about what you may be started off using and maybe switched to. Now, don't forget that carbohydrate is the uh, preferred respiratory substrate, um, then lipids and then proteins. So here are some other examples which you can have a look at uh, if you want to pause the video and have a quick go. I know it's not exactly volumes, but it does give you the idea of what you need to be doing within this kind of question. So if you got here 0.7, as you can see, it, this is a fatty acid. This is a um, lipid. That is the lipid volume, uh, the number as well. Okay, and for this last one here, you can see here that the you can't calculate the RQ value because I have no oxygen consumed. Therefore, it's anaerobic respiration taking place in this last one. So I cannot calculate an RQ value. So there we have the differences between the different energy values that um, lipids give off the highest energy, then proteins, and then carbohydrates. You do need to be aware of the respiratory quotient, how to calculate this, and also how to use this formula. Don't forget you will need to apply this to situations you may be unfamiliar with, but you just need to relax and apply your knowledge. Guys, remember in your exam, don't use the words it, they, amount or size. You use good scientific terminology to explain your answers. And if you like the videos, subscribe.